At the end of a year in Louisville, we find ourselves still living at the Indian Queen Hotel. Less rough than others where we've stayed, though every bit as noisy. And now we have our own room, where no one spits tobacco juice. As my confinement nears, I pass the time in sewing. How I long to have a book. What does it mean to sacrifice everything for someone else's art? I'd been reading a biography of John James Audubon, beguiled by the brash and talented young Frenchman. Now, my interest was shifting toward Lucy Bakewell, his remarkable English wife, an accomplished young woman who met him in 1804, soon after both arrived in America. How, I wondered, might she have viewed their adventures? The decades of moving along the Ohio and Mississippi rivers, faced with misfortune and poverty, the long months she spent alone with her young sons, with little to depend on but her own wits and courage. This afternoon we saw him off, young John waving from the wharf as if his arm would break, and Victor stoic. I must collect the monies owed him for his work at the museum. We have yet to see a cent of it. When John James' business failed, Lucy parlayed her lively intelligence and musical abilities into work that supported the family, freeing Audubon to pursue his passion for drawing wildlife. This in an era when women were barred from paid employment. Father never treated me as being of a weaker sex, allowing me his laboratory, the company of his friends. How could I have known how critical this would be? How else, in honesty, could I tout myself as a tutor? Audubon Sparrow, as events unfold from Lucy's perspective, the Audubon story gains a new focus. Without her persistence and support, could he have become the artist naturalist we celebrate today? Audubon Sparrow, Lucy's Story, a biography in poems.